So what's going on guys and welcome back to episode number 83 of our Portsmouth career mode and we are going to be kicking off this episode with a home game up against Hull but we aren't going to be playing, we're going to go ahead and sim this game as we've got three other games in this episode that we are wanting to play more than this one against Hull so hoping we can come out on top, we are currently playing at Fratton Park and we win the game 1-0, Martinez picking up the goal for us in the 20th minute, a little disappointing that Dahu picked up a uh, double yellow card and did in fact get sent off off, but still, we managed to pick up all three points, which is in fact the most important thing of them all. And he picks up a one match ban, so it's not the worst case scenario. But the reason I wanted to do that is because we have a massive game up against Chelsea in the next uh, up and coming days. So it's going to be a big game for us, but I do hope we can come out on top and try and pick up all three points as we are challenging for the title. And I do think we have got a chance because we're currently seven points behind Chelsea. So it is a big ask, but if we beat Chelsea, we'll only be three points behind them. So that's how big a game it is. Hatchin Mastor has also accepted his contract offer that we give him. And we get an update from the United States, which we're not that interested in now. So it's a big, big ask. Can we go ahead and get the win that we desperately need? We have got our first team lineup available for us as well. So there's no reason why we can't go out and pick up all three points. Chelsea creating a good chance for himself. Matic plays ball through to Ramirez. Ramirez strikes it, and that's a wonderful save from Christopher Shiplock, the goalkeeper that we have had faith in. There was a few comments saying maybe sell him in the January transfer window, as we had plenty of offers for him, but I wanted to try and keep him at the club, and that is what we've done. But even if we buy another goalkeeper, I don't think I'm gonna be that keen on selling him, because I do like the guy, but he just makes a few mistakes. And only from Boca through to Bergwin. Bergwin's surely going to beat Callas for pace. Can he cut back inside with a scoop turn? He fake shots, cuts back inside with a scoop turn, then tries to go one way. And I went the wrong way, but Bergwin wins the ball back. He plays the ball through to Boca. Boca turning his man, and Boca's shot goes just wide of the post. Courtois was at full stretch. I don't think he would have got to it, but Yannick Boca, our striker in form, fails to hit the target. And Chelsea, you've got to be kidding me. 35 minutes into the game, Pedro opens the scoring. What a fantastic goal it was. They have a free kick that was cleared off the line by Joe Gomez. They win the ball back through Carlas. Carlos to Matic. Matic to Pedro. And the Spanish former Barcelona man scores a wonderful goal on the turn. Pretty similar to what I tried with Boca, but it didn't work for us. And well, what a fantastic goal. No wonder why Chelsea are top if they're scoring goals like that. Win the ball back through Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek true to Boca. And Boca finds the goal for us 45 minutes into the game. Just before the halftime break. The perfect possible end to the first half. We managed to get ourselves back on level terms. Very poor play from Chelsea there. As Nemanja Batic loses the ball to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He threads the ball through to Yannick Boca. And... Boca is going to score from there. The former Chelsea man himself picks up his seventh goal so far this Barclays Premier League season. And I think he's been the best signing we've made since we've been at Portsmouth. He's an absolute animal. Paul from Matic again. He's given the ball away. The last thing you can do is give the ball away when you've got strikers in form running through on goal. He played the ball back to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek to strike it from range. And his shot goes blazing over the bar. And I thought the former Chelsea man would have had a better shot than that. At least hitting the target. That was in a good position. Paul from Chelsea. They give the ball away to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek tries to thread the ball through to Kingsley Coman, which we do do. Kingsley Coman strikes here. And Kingsley Coman finds the back of the net. Just two minutes remaining into the game and we go ahead and pick up what is most likely to be the winner. Ruben Loftus-Cheek once again being the provider. A lovely ball through to Kingsley Coman and what about that for a first time finish into the back of the net. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he's played phenomenal in this game. The former Chelsea player, well, nipping in twice against Nemanja Matic. Nemanja Matic had an awful game, to be honest. So the final whistle goes, and we end up winning the game 2-1. So after being 1-0 down, we managed to come back to actually win the game. My man of the match does go to this guy, the former Chelsea man, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who in fact did pick up his first goal for Chelsea very recently in the FA Cup, and what a performance it was by him, picking up two assists, robbing Nemanja Matic twice of the ball, and both times setting up goals for us. 
A wonderful game by him. So before we jump into the next game up against Leeds, we have got once again some more player training. A few of our players are so very close to going to the next rating. Will this be the one where they do go up? Yes, it is, because Kingsley Coman has now hit a 79 rated. So he's inching so much closer now to an 80 rated. And um, Yannick Bock has overtaken him now because he's closer to an 81 now. So now it's time to move into the second game of the episode, which is going to be at Fratton Park up against Leeds in the F. A Cup round of 16. So we have got our first team lineup for this one, even though they're not fully fit. The reason being is because we've got a Champions League group stage game up very soon. So that's the reason. So the reason I want to do this is I want to try and win the FA Cup. We are yet to win it. We haven't won it yet. We haven't won either the Carling Cup. We haven't won any competition apart from the leagues until we got to the Premier League. So I'm desperate to try and win at the competition. Lovely build-up play. He squeezes the ball through to Stephen Bergwin. He's through one on with the goalkeeper. He tries to scoop turn inside. Gets it a little bit wrong. But he's somehow still got the ball. He goes for goal this time. And this time he does in fact find the back of the net. So he messed up his first chance. But he got a little bit lucky. As the ball rebounded off of his leg. Hit the defender's leg. And then somehow managed back at his feet. And this time he did not try and mess around. This time he puts his foot through the ball. And finds the back of the net. The goalkeeper with no chance whatsoever of that one. And a lovely strike from Steven Bergwin. Leaves with a lovely chance. Lovely ball played through to Mowat. And what about that for a save from Christopher Shiplock. At full stretch, he denies Griffiths there. What a save by Shiplock. That's the reason why I didn't want to sell him. Bocker with a lovely chance. He goes on a dazing run. He squeezed the ball through to Mastor. Mastor through to Bergwin. Bergwin trying the shot from range. And the goalkeeper comes out with a really good save as Heaton denies us from doubling our lead just before the halftime break. What a lovely goal from Hatchin Mastor. 51 minutes in. I was not expecting him to score from there. He goes on a really good run. A little bit of a skill move he pulled off as well. And he takes aim from a hell of a long way out. Look at this from Hatchin in my store. A little bit of skill moves, not anything extravagant, but cuts back inside, goes for the strike. And what a goal from a Hatchie and Mastor. Leeds with a really good chance for themselves. They shoot and uh, they get their shot blocked and it falls to the feet of their number 10. And, well, we might have a game on our hands now, just as I thought that Leeds weren't attacking us at all. They go ahead, held, nice held up play from their striker. They have a shot. Hits Joe Gomez on the back. It falls to their number 10. And this time he doesn't fail and finds the back of the net. This time Schiff, Christopher Shiplock can't get anywhere near it. And it, have they got a route back in the game? Lovely chance for Leeds. They play the ball inside. And you've got to be kidding me. With just seven minutes remaining, Leeds go ahead and get themselves back on level terms. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, the provider of the two goals in the previous game, this time was at fault, but a lovely build-up play from Leeds there. What about that for a ball inside? And a first-time finish past Shiplock, and Sam Byram picks the goal up for Leeds, so we've let a two-goal lead slip. Really disappointing by us. But it looks like we've got a chance for ourselves. The ball's been played through to Kingsley Coman. He's charging through on goal. Can we wrap up the game? Surely Kingsley Coman's going to find the back of the net. He can't. He was one-on-one -on -one with the Leeds United goalkeeper. And we mess up our chance. And it looks like it's going to go to a replay. So the worst case scenario for us. We had a lovely chance. Kingsley Coman, I thought, was going to find the back of the net. But he couldn't. Very disappointing from our star striker. But the game finished 2-2. We let a 2-0 lead slip. My man of the match does go to Hatchin Mastor after he scored that fantastic goal. But we cannot let a such easy game slip out of our grasp. It looked like it was going to be a trot to the finish. A very comfortable win. They got a consolation goal and then they scored with just a few minutes remaining. We had a really good chance at the very end of the game to wrap it up. But Kingsley Cohen missed it. So now we have in fact got our third and final game of the episode. Which is going to be at Fratton Park up against Middlesbrough. So they're currently sitting around about the mid-table mark. But we are going to be playing our second team lineup in this one. Because we've got a humongous game in the next episode against Real Madrid in the Champions League group stage. So I need my full squad to be fit for that one. Martinez on the ball. Fred's the ball through to Leon Bailey. Bailey on his favourite left boot. This time he strikes it. And we are completely dominating the game. But we're just struggling to try and get clear-cut chances. Middlesbrough defending really well. Bailey with the ball through to Dahoud. Dahoud through to Ryan Gold. Gold to try and cut back inside. He does do. We're trying to create something for ourselves. A lovely step over. He goes for goal. 
And wow, Ryan Gold steps up to the plate and just two minutes after the half-time break, Ryan Gold so, uh, levitates off the pitch for one, but scores a wonderful goal. Fake shots inside, then ball rolled, then a little step over, leaves the defender for dead, strikes out of his left boot. The Middlesbrough goalkeeper at full stretch couldn't get anywhere near it, and Ryan Gold with a goal to remember. A really good chance for Middlesbrough in the dying stage of the game. Inyagas has been nipped to the ball, but Shiplock comes out for the cross and gets there just in the nick of time, and we should be able to break now with Ryan Gold playing the ball to Martinez. Martinez through to Leon Bailey. Bailey's definitely got the pace to take on Robertson. Cuts back inside, gets a little bit lucky, but Ryan Gold on the ball. Kishner at this time playing the ball through. Can we squeeze it through? It's a good ball across the face of goal, but no one made the run. Maybe we've got one last chance. We squeeze the ball through to Leon Bailey. Can Leon Bailey get there in time? It doesn't look like he does, but it doesn't matter because the referee blows his full time whistle and we end up picking up yet another really good result. Just a 1 0 result, which isn't the most convincing, but what a goal it was as well by my man of the match, Ryan Gold. A lovely step over and fake shot from him to pick up a wonderful goal just after the half-time break. But apart from that, there wasn't much else that happened. So before we end up this episode, we are going to have one more player training session as Mastor and Bakali and also Bocca are getting close to the next rating and fantastic news as Yannick Bocca has now hit an 81 rated, which means he's now improved the rating for the next game against Real Madrid. What a massive tie this is going to be in the round of 16 of the Champions League. Real Madrid are coming to Fratton Park. But to see that episode, you're going to have to come back in... To see that game, you're going to have to come back in the next episode, which will be up very soon for all you guys to see. And it's going to be a very big episode. It's going to be the toughest task we've had so far in the whole of the series. So it's taken 84 episodes to get to it. But 84 episodes and we're welcoming Real Madrid to Fratton Park. So if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to hit the like button down below as it is going to be very much appreciated. And don't forget, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button down below as it is going to be very much appreciated. And you will be able to keep up to date with all my latest videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.